Good afternoon, everyone. So today, this girl, her name is Sasha. She just gets short all over. So we're going to do a seven on the body, and then the ears are always real short, and then we're going to trim this face up real tight. But first, before we get her in the bath, we are just going to do the paw pads and the nails. I'd say she comes in about every four months or so. She comes in when she gets shabby. About this length is when she always comes in. She's got a lot of burrs in her coat. And seed grass or grass seeds and stuff. Girl, you're okay. So the 15 setting. If you guys are using regular clippers and you are inexperienced, please use a 10 instead of a 15. Um, 15 is really short and there's a higher risk of nicking or cutting the dog. Do a pretty wide sanitary on this girl just because her coat is going to be really short. Mm -hmm. 
Might have to go over this again after she's dry, but just gonna rough it in just so we can check for anything that might be going on. My main focus is just to get those, any burrs I see out because she is matted, a little matted in areas, and I'm not going to, you know, torture her by And there might be some burrs that I don't get out, but I'm just gonna get out the ones that I can see or feel. And the other ones will be clipped out with the clippers. Okay, the ears actually are pretty clean. They don't need any major hair removal. Yep, they look clean, they're not dirty, they're not super hairy. So you guys will notice as I walk back here, the savior for a bathing system is gone. I have taken it down. I have made a order from a grooming company that I, there's only two grooming companies that I order from besides, you know, getting stuff off of Amazon. One of those being Groomer's Choice, the other one being Ryan's Pet Supply. Um, I made a massive order from Ryan's Pet Supply and along with that is a new bathing system. And I am going back and forth on whether or not I'm even going to be using the Save Your Fur nozzle um, because I want to show you guys a more affordable way to groom than buying a $60 nozzle. So we'll see. It's supposed to be here. I'm going to get it set up when it gets here. But for now, I had to take that down to make room for the new bathing system. And so this is what the tub, not this, but this is originally what the tub came with. And so I am doing the old fashioned hand bathing today for you guys. So I have the just diluted shampoo. Today I'm using the Spring Meadows Inhale Exhale Spring Number Two. The link to this shampoo is all the way at the bottom in the description box. It's the Groomer's Choice link. Um, I really, really love this smell. So we're just gonna start by getting her wet. Gotta get down. We're just gonna get her wet all over. So this, there'll only be about two dogs that'll be bathed with this setup until the new bathing system is here. So, So when you're bathing a dog by hand and not using a bathing system, you want to wet the dog completely everywhere before you get started. You kind of smell like skunk, girl. Ew. Something. You don't smell good. down. So we're just going to take this and we're just going to dump it and then I'm just going to start scrubbing. So when you have a bathing system, it gets in there down to the skin for you. But when you're hand bathing, you've got to do it by hand, obviously. Come here, girl. Hand 
hand bathing is just a lot more inefficient than a bathing system. Um, I could have already had this girl bathed by now with the bathing system. Because the bathing system does most of the work for you. It gets down to the skin, it shoots that dirt and debris, dead skin cells out for you. Okay, so I am going to rinse her off, the majority of her off, down. So I'm gonna do a second quick wash. When you're hand bathing, you don't have the, the bathing system that's running, you know, com continuous clean soapy water over the dog, washing away dirt and debris. So sometimes you might have to bathe the dog two, three, four, five times before they're clean and all that dirt is out of their coat. I'm gonna do one more pour over and just a quick scrub all over. Just to make sure any last dirt that is in the coat is removed. Do the anal glands. Okay, and then we're gonna rinse. I know this system is not ideal, this setup, um, but the sprayers I have are too, the attachment area is too big to attach to this, so. Not ideal, but it's only for one or two dogs until the new bathing system gets here. It's supposed to, it's gonna be delivered today, so. And then I'll show you guys what I'm gonna use instead of the savior for bathing system. And then uh, I'll decide if I wanna go back to it or not. But if I wanna go back to the savior for bathing system, I'm gonna have to wait four to six weeks because I cannot get the nozzle off that I have. I cannot get it off of that hose. Um, I, I tried for about 45 minutes this morning with pliers and I just can't, can't get it off. So yeah. Okay, so I'm just gonna squeeze all of this excess water. Okay.
girl is so tiny underneath all this hair. It's crazy. I always forget how tiny she is until I get all this hair off of her. Have a lot of shave downs during the summer, especially the once a year shave downs. Here in Oklahoma, if you guys are not from the United States or you just don't know, here in Oklahoma, it can get to 110, 115 in the summer. It gets super hot. So I have a lot of people that come in for once a year shave downs. I do a lot of shave downs that people are not going to agree with. So if that's something that you don't agree with, you don't agree with, um, you know, double coated dogs getting shaved or this and that, uh, my channel is probably not the channel to watch. I am going to do what the owner wants um, as far as shave downs. Now, if a dog comes in and their coat needs to be shaved um, and the owner doesn't want it shaved, then I try to communicate with the owner and explain why I feel the coat needs to be shaved. It's matted. Um, there's too much undercoat and the undercoat has matted or you know it's a damaged coat and we need to start over whatever the reason may be so i try to do what the owner wants um regarding shaving but you know if come on girl I, I'm not like most groomers. If the owner wants it fine, if I feel it's going to physically injure, physically harm the dog, um, like for sure injure the dog, then I'm not going to do it. Um, but in my opinion, and not everybody's going to agree with me. Not everybody's going to like me for saying this. If an owner wants their double-coated dog shaved, I'm going to do it. It's their dog, and it's their choice. No, I don't agree with double-coated dogs being shaved. Um, but if I don't do it, they're going to take their dog somewhere else, and somewhere else is going to do it. So regardless, the dog is going to be shaved down, um, whether I do it or whether another groomer here locally does it. And why would I refuse that? I mean, they're paying me to, to do that. So I'm not going to refuse a double-coated dog shave down. Sorry for those of you out there that don't agree with me. But I am here to do a job and I'm gonna do my job the way I feel is the best way to run my business if I start turning away everybody for this or that or, or whatever then I would have no clients left it's just like if I reported certain people to animal welfare i would have no clients left because people wouldn't want to come to me because they knew they would know that i was going to report their dog and the reason i don't report is because they don't do anything anyway they see that if a dog is matted and they're shaved it's bettering the situation therefore they can't do anything i just got a lot a lot of hate on my last video that i posted when this video comes out, when you guys are watching this video, it'll be a couple weeks ago, but um, it was on English Shepherd, supposedly is what the breed was by the, no, 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 by the owner. And I got so much hate for shaving it be just because the owner wanted it shaved. It is what it is. So along with the new bathing system, I also ordered some cordless clippers. 
to try out. I'm, I'm tired of this cord getting twisted and caught on things and tangled up and pulled out of the wall or pulled out of the socket. Okay, so if you remember, we already did the nails and paw pads. This girl is tiny, um, so sometimes on tinier dogs it is hard to get in there with the clippers because the clippers are, you know, half the, more than half the length of her body. So if a dog does not want to stand the right way when you lift their front feet up, you can just lift their back feet up and do it that way. And this way. Brush this tail out real quick. It's got some burrs and matting in it. This girl is so cute when she gets done. Always gets the same cut. Okay, so I'll turn her and take this off. We're just going to go around the neck. Girl, you smell like skunk. You must have got sprayed. No, 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 you're okay. You can just sit on the counter there. Thank you. Okay. Girl, come here. We always want to look out the door. You guys are trying to see what's going on, huh?
Come here. You're okay. To get those mats out of the armpits, I'm going to use the nine setting on the little clippers. Now I can see what I'm doing. I can come in here and clip this a little better. When there's so much hair, you can't really see what's going on in the sanitary area. Turn this way. Let's see over here. No, 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 no. We're not doing all that. Okay, so now I'm going to brush this hair back. Under the ears. This is what the owner gets. This is their choice of cut. Uh, this dog always gets the same thing, so I'm just doing the same thing that I always do.
had a no-show this morning, or it wasn't, it was a no-show. They called, but they, it was like, their appointment was at 9.30. And they called about 9.20 and said they would be there about 9.50, and I just told them, you know, we've got a policy. You need to be here by 9.45 or you'll have to reschedule. And they called me about 9.50 and said, hey, I can't make it. And I was just like, okay. <sighs> um, it's, I I've had to crack down. I've had people, you know, push over for literally years now. And I've just had to crack down and that I've got, you know, a no exceptions policy now. If you don't give 48 hours notice, your card is charged. I require all, every single last person to book with a card on file. And they have to prepay because I have a no show at least once every two weeks. And like this morning, this person, you know, they get plenty of warnings, plenty of, it's not warnings, plenty of um, notifications of when their appointment is and the policies and everything. Our client agreement is on the website. So there's just really no excuse to miss or be late to an appointment. And in that time, it was a $125 dog. In that time when they didn't show up, had they not prepaid and I not charged them, that's $125 that I would have lost that another client could have used that space and instead you know, I would have lost that money. So I used to feel bad about it, but it's just like going to a doctor. If I am, you know, don't call and cancel my appointment, charge me, you know, that's my responsibility to keep my appointment. And if I don't have the common courtesy to call and cancel, in an appropriate amount of time, then I deserve to be charged because that is a spot that another person could have used. No, 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 stop, girl. No, we're not doing that. My next client just dropped their dog off. Um, people are not gonna like me for that video at all. But it is what it is. Okay, so now, I'm just gonna trim her face up. it all trimmed up now and get a comb come here girl you got to turn we're almost done then you can look out the door all you want
Okay, so I'm gonna take this off and then put the seven back on there. And just clean up this neckline a little bit better. I have had some uh, questionable people bring their dogs to me. Um, back before I was real comfortable with filming, you know, I had a lady come in and, and she smacked her dog in front of me. And then I've had, um, I didn't want to say anything to them because I was afraid that they might come after me while they were here. But, um, it was a couple that brought in their pit bull and the dog, they didn't use a regular leash on the dog. It was like a wire, plastic coated um, wire tie out line. And this guy repeatedly um, smacked his dog with, with it. And uh, yeah, it was, I've had some, some rough experiences being a groomer with people. Dogs are the easy part of grooming. The, the rough part is dealing with clients. I've had to turn away several just because they want their dog in such a specific way that takes them 15 minutes to explain. And if one little thing is not right then it's the end of the world um yeah so it's just being a groomer is not all cuts and cuddles You're so cute. Okay, so now I am going to get her a bandana. I've done away with my smaller ones. I took it down, it's right there. I just, this specific dog could fit, but I don't have a lot of other dogs that are this small. So we're gonna pick a lighter color because she has a, has a, she has a dark color coat. And we're just gonna roll it up to where it fits her. And then we'll put it on her. And you can leave it like that or you can cut that excess off. These are scissors I do not use for grooming. Don't use grooming scissors to do this. Sorry, there's no after shot. That was the owner that was picking up that dog. And so I just, it was perfect timing. I just finished it. So I just went and handed him the dog and they left. Sometimes it happens like that. Most of the time I will text a client and let them know their dog is ready. Um, but some just show up. <laughs> 